All right, here we go. 3.5 EcoBoost. Uh, if you watched the previous video, you know the story behind this. Somebody left the oil dipstick out and it ran the engine out of oil. And it took out one of the cam phasers here, as you can see. It's broken there. We got some nice metal sitting on the edge of the cylinder head there under the valve cover. So I got to put a new phaser in it. And to do that, though, you have to take the have to take the timing chains off the front cover. So that's what I'm in the middle of doing right now. It wasn't too bad. I'm actually working outside. I got uh, all my parts here in the back of another truck. But I know it looks like a big mess, but it's just one of those things where if you do it yourself, it's not that bad. Uh, so. It took me about, uh, I'd say maybe two, three hours to get to this point here. So it wasn't too bad once you get all the intercooler lines out of the way. It's pretty easy. So I'll just show you this here. Cover comes off. It's a nice day to be working outside too. This is actually really nice. It's a pleasant 70 something degrees. There's a the cover. There are the timing chains. There you have it. It's one big one, runs from the crank. And then there's two little ones here that go to the second camshaft. You can see them there. So, now I can get to my busted phaser. Oh yeah, look at that metal. That's good. <laughs> Well, okay, that's actually not good. That's very bad. <laughs> it's cool, nevertheless. I love diagnosing something, finding something like this. It just makes it all the more interesting. Always wanted to get my hands on one of these engines, take it apart, and see what it's all about. So far, I've been pretty impressed. This is on a 2015 F-150. This one only has 7,000 miles on it. But, so there you have it timing cover off an EcoBoost. Like I said, it didn't take too long. It only took me about three hours to get to this point. So now I just gotta uh, use a little tension reliever here and compress the chain tensioner. I'm gonna mark them first so I know where they go. Take these loose so I can get this phaser off and replace the phaser. But yeah, that's some good looking metal there. And yeah, that's nasty. It was sure making a knocking noise. It wasn't lower though, it was all upper. That was because of that phaser gone bad. So I don't know. Thought about replacing the other one, but it's not a warranty job. So I'm just going with the one for now. That's what it looks like. Not too bad. Pretty easy. Like I said, I love getting my hands on new stuff like this. This is pretty cool. I love it. And we got a nice big bunch of parts here. <laughs> uh, pretty easy and straightforward to get to. Haven't needed any specialty tools so far. All right, I'm at a stopping point here. The biggest pain, I think, of this whole job is using the razor blade to scrape the, uh, the sealant, the RTV, off of the front of the engine there and the cylinder heads. So basically what I've got is a little scraper here and um, you just scrape the gasket material off there. As you can see, I'm, I'm pretty much already done. But I got all that off. Like I said, that's the most tedious part of the job. It's kind of a, this engine being a pickup, it's kind of a backbreaker as well. So I was actually sitting up in the engine compartment there to get that out. But I got it all done. Now I just gotta clean the front cover off over there, find a place for all this crap <laughs> until my parts come in. But it actually wasn't too bad, like I was saying earlier. And man, now that I got this engine apart, it's actually, um, I'd be a lot more comfortable buying one of these and recommending one of them. Uh, the timing chains and components are actually pretty simple. And as you can see, I guess Ford finally learned their lesson from the 5.4s, as you've probably seen in my other videos, 
and beef these tensioners and guides up like crazy. These things are about three times as thick as the ones on the 5.4. So I have a lot more faith in these. And as long as you keep your engine oil full, keep your engine oil changed, these should last a while actually, because they're just, I mean, look at that sucker. That thing is, that thing is huge. That's three finger what's thick right there. So I think this will actually work all right. I know everybody's really skeptical about these engines when they first came out, but they've actually proven themselves. A friend of mine has 150,000 on his 2011, and all he's ever done to it is uh, that issue with the intercooler that they have a condensation building up in them. Other than that, he's never had a single problem with it. So, Like I've always said, I, I kind of like the idea. I like these engines. I think they're the way of the future. Just got to keep... Uh, <laughs> In this case you got to keep engine oil in them <laughs> anyways so when my parts come in i'll put up another video put up part three